Hey everybody, I hope you all are doing well and staying warm and uh, enjoying this life as much as you can. Uh, I'm Pastor Eric, welcome to this week's edition of our virtual Sunday School class on the Lord's Prayer. This is our, our fifth session, our fifth week, um, exploring this very important prayer and I hope you've enjoyed this uh, journey as much as we have enjoyed taking this journey with you. So today um, we're going to be talking about the next lines of the prayer which are forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And there's other ways that we uh, might have heard that before or might have said that before and we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. But now I'm going to turn it over to Mrs. Barnett um, to start things off with an activity. So I'll see you in a minute. Hi boys and girls. We're going to do for our gathering for lesson five is we're going to make a heart. And I know we already gone, we've already gone through our Valentine's Day, but that's okay. All you need is you'll take your paper, you, it'll be either pink or red in your bag, and you want to, you can do this one either way. You can make it what I consider fat with a fold this way, or you can make it skinny, totally up to you. And what you do, and you probably know how to do this already, I'm sure you've already done this at school, but again, you take this fold right here, and you're going to make a half, a half of a heart. So kind of a shape like, like that. And then Again, you're going to make sure that you don't cut on the fold. Because we'll be doing the same type of thing um, on the sixth lesson. All right. There you go. And then you make a heart. And then for this, what I want you to do is cut it into so you're making like a puzzle. So you can make it however you want it to be. And you're going to have to get your family to work with you on this, which is great. And after you've made it into some pieces, now your job is to give it to your family and have them put your part back together. Now you can do this another way. If you'd like to, you could also hide these pieces and know how many pieces you've made, that you've cut them into how many pieces, and have hide, hide them like in one of your class, in one of your rooms, you know, your living room or in your bedroom or something, and then have your family go find the pieces. And then you want to, once you get all your pieces back, then you want to work together as a puzzle and putting the puzzle back together. Now, the reason why we wanted to do that is the way that puzzle was made. You made a heart, you cut it into pieces. It's kind of like re relationships can break down. Like um, maybe you've had a, a fall, falling out with a friend or whatever, but you have to work really hard to put it back together and that's why putting that puzzle together is like um, putting relationships back together and that if you just work really hard, and it is hard, you have to work hard to bring those relationships back, those friendships back. And the reason that you do that is you give it through forgiveness. And that's what we're going to be talking about today's lesson, is about the way Jesus gave forgiveness and the way that the Lord, the God gives us forgiveness. All right. So that's your gathering, and I'll probably see you in a little bit. Thank you, Mrs. Barnett. So let's, let's turn now to our scripture passage. And I'm going to read um, from Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 through 12 this week. And Jesus said, Pray then in this way, O Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. The word of God for a people of God. Thanks be to God. Forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. Or forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. You know, many churches and communities say this line from the Lord's Prayer differently, as I mentioned. Some churches say, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Others say, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And some say, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And each of these versions, though different, they all get at the, the main thing that Jesus was really trying to get at. The main thing that Jesus wants us to learn. Forgiveness. Sometimes we might do something that hurts somebody else's feelings. We might do something that um, hurts somebody physically, um, even on accident. Um, we might do something that's wrong. And when we do things that are wrong or we hurt somebody, well, it's important that we go and we say we're sorry, that we're, we admit that we were wrong, right? And then hopefully, hopefully that person forgives us. And likewise, if somebody um, does something to us that hurts our feelings or hurts us somehow, um, does wrong to us somehow, if they come and they say they're sorry, like, well, Hopefully we can forgive them as well. And then hopefully what happens is we can continue to be in relationship with each other. We can continue to be connected, to be friends. Um, continue to play together, to talk together, um, to do whatever. Even people that love each other a whole lot. Well, sometimes we still do something wrong and we still need forgiveness. We need to forgive each other. Um, and that's what what this is all about today. But going back to the scripture, Jesus used some, uses some in interesting words to talk about this. He talks about debts and debtors. Debts and debtors, well, that's, those are really words that we associate uh, with money. Right? And so, Back in Jesus' day, many of Jesus' listeners were poor. They lived in debt, and that was a, a major problem. You know, debt is when you owe something to somebody else, and it's usually money. And when people, when poor people owed somebody money back then, they could lose their land, they could lose their home, or they could lose other important things. And being in debt to other people also brought a lot of shame onto a person and their family. And for the people who lived during Jesus' time, honor and shame, they meant a lot. They were a really big deal. Receiving shame from their community was a major, major punishment beyond anything we know today. So in Matthew's Gospel, the words debts and sins are often used to mean the same thing. Well, it brings a different understanding of sin than what we often think of today. Sin involves relationships. Because God made us for connection with God and each other, to sin meant the breaking of relationships or connections or friendships. And this happens through choices that we make by ourselves, as well as decisions made by other groups or the systems that we talked about a couple weeks ago these systems that we belong to. People in Jesus' time, and even today, well, money and debts, they're one of the major ways that people hurt each other. And because of the way that our world runs, having a lot of money, it means having a lot of power over other people. So when Jesus taught his disciples to pray, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. 
Well, he was calling for a world where people weren't divided, especially by money. Jesus what in what we call now distributive justice. I know those are big words, um, but it really just means uh, making systems like we talked about a couple weeks ago, making systems work so that everybody has their fair share and is taken care of right? and has what they need um, to live and enjoy this life. Now, one of Jesus' most powerful parables about debts and forgiveness is the story of a father with two sons. It's called the prodigal son. Uh, but the main character we learn forgiveness from is the father. And he had two sons, both of whom are important for the story. Now in this parable, a man had two sons. And one day, the younger son told his dad, I want to leave, and I want you to give me all the money you've saved so far for me. Hearing this from his son hurt his father's heart as this was something kids didn't do. It was disrespectful to the parent, and it brought a lot of shame to the family. People always thought of the family first, not themselves. Even so, the father honored his son's request, and he gave the younger son his share. The younger son packed his bags, left, and went very far away. And he wasted all the money his dad had given him. The country where he was living had a famine, so they ran out of food. The younger son had no more money and no more food. And so he said to himself, if I want to live, my only choice is to go back to my dad. I'll tell him I've made a lot of bad choices and I don't deserve to be his son anymore. I'll beg him to let me work on his farm for food. So the younger son returned to his father's home. But before he even reached the house, his father saw him and ran out of the house and hugged him tightly. He was so happy to see him. Instead of being angry or telling his son he needed to pay him back for all the money he'd wasted, the father started planning a big party to celebrate the son's return to the family. And when the older son came back to the house from working in the field and learned what happened, well, he was very upset. He thought it was so unfair that his younger brother was being treated this way after he'd wasted his father's money. But the father tells the older son, they need to celebrate because the younger son has been restored to the family. As we see in this parable, forgiveness is about restoration. Restoration is bringing something or someone back to what or who it was before. Restoration is healing. It puts people in harmony and good relationship again. It's remembering that each of us is made in God's image, and God said we are very good. Because we belong to each other and God, we owe one another our commitment in making a just world where everyone can flourish. For that to happen, we need to have compassion for ourselves and each other the way the father and the younger son in the parable did. Relationship and connection are more valuable than money. But there's more when it comes to forgiveness. And when it comes to this idea of debt or sin or transgression in the Lord's Prayer that we pray. Sometimes we do things that God isn't very happy with. We do things that make God angry or sad. You know, and God wishes us to do better. We make bad choices in God's thinking. But God loves us so much that just like the Father in this parable, no matter what we've done, God forgives us. God restores us to relationship with God. God embraces us and is thankful that we're in relationship with God. 
And so because of that, we call that grace, because of that forgiveness, because of the ways that we're restored to God. Another way to think about all this, well, because we're forgiven by God, we forgive others who maybe do something wrong to us. Right? We try to keep our friendships and to maintain our relationships and connections as best we can, as much as it's up to us. You know, we try to live out the same grace, and mercy, and forgiveness that we receive. Well, all that being said, it's time to turn you back over to Mrs. Barnett for another activity. Well, here she is. Okay, so now we're going to work on our activity for um, session five, and this is talking about a caring tree. We're going to make a caring tree, and you notice I found another background, and it was perfect because I wanted to talk to you about plants and the things that you have to have in order to take care of a plant or a tree, and of course you've got your blossom and you've got your leaves and you've got your trunk and you've got um, water and so you want to talk about your family about how do you take care of a, a, a plant and I know that I know if you've been in first grade you have taught about this before Okay, but what we're going to do is, in your package, there are lots of pieces. And you notice I don't have a lot of room here, but that's okay. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to take your paper bag. And at the top where you can open, we're going to cut, can you see? I'm cutting about halfway down. I'm going to make about four different places. So I've got, I've got one, two, three, four. So see how I did that? Okay. Then you're gonna very carefully, you wanna open it up without tearing the paper. And you're gonna take your beans in, in a plastic bag. You've got some beans. And if you have to share them with your family, that's good. But you're just gonna put some beans in the bottom and this will help it to hold, hold it. It's kind of like putting the trunk, the roots, the roots would hold, there we go, would hold the um, tree into the ground so it wouldn't waffle, waffle so badly. Okay, so then what you're going to do is put those beans all in the bottom and you want to just kind of, we're going to start at the bottom. So here's where your, your beans are, which we're going to pretend those are your, like your, your roots. And then you're going to kind of twist it around. And this becomes the trunk of the tree. And now you've got these things. And what you want to do is just take one or two things that again at together and you just kind of twist it all up. And now you're making your li your lead um, limbs. So maybe that one. And if you want to, I don't have any tape, so if you want to put some tape right at the very end and that'll hold it real good, after a while it will hold it. So you've got lots of limbs in your caring tree. And while you're doing this, parents, you can talk to about those different parts of a plant and what you have to have to make them grow. Or perhaps, kids, you can teach your parents about all these things you know of. So I've got my, my roots that holds into the ground, I've got my trunk, I've got my limbs, different sizes, and they're kind of radiating away from the trunk. Okay, 
So then I also gave you some green, some green tissue. And you really don't have to make a different shape, but you can just kind of make little pieces. And I'm not gonna make a whole bunch of these, I'll just make a couple for you. And then you'll need some glue, and I didn't have any glue to put in your packets, so I hope you have some glue at home. And I hope this works. But you're going to put a little bit of glue on it, and then just stick it onto your limbs. And make a couple more here. So you don't really have to make a leaf shape unless you want to. If you really want to, you can. You can just kind of roll them up into pieces, tip them on. And you know if you look in a tree, which right now you're not going to be able to see much, but you don't want to just put them around the edge. You're going to put them all the way around. They have these little buds. Okay, so there you go. So you kind of fill up all your limbs with some of these leaves. And so now you've got your caring, your caring tree. And then what I want you to talk to with your parents is things that can hurt a tree, like perhaps um, lack of water, or maybe cutting one down, or even pollution, different things that could really hurt these trees that you've just made. And sharing that your humans and trees have some things in common, for instance, one thing about the same as about a grown-up or a human, is we need water. Well, a tree needs a water, a place to live. Well, it needs to have some dirt. Well, we don't really need dirt, but we do need dirt in order to grow different foods. So talk a little bit about that. And then also things that, things that we can actually harm others is very similar because when something gets less healthy, harm is done to the tree or to yourself. And by sharing ways we can care for each other and our world, we are reminded we can participate in the restoration and the flourishing of God's world. I also gave you a, a list, a, another really good book that I would love to have it to read to you right now, but I don't have it with me. But if you have a chance to read The Giving Tree, uh, by Shel Silverstein. It's a great story. In fact, I also put a link to a YouTube, which is a cart kind of a cartoon type thing, but it's, it's really good, and I'd love for you to read that, and I think it really brings a lot of this together. All right, so that's how you make your activity, your caring tree. Welcome back. So now it's time for us to have a little discussion about you know, what, what the scripture and the stories and, and all this uh, means to us. And so I invite you to, to get your coloring page if you want and, and uh, something to color with and to sit with one another and to, to talk together as I ask you these questions. And you know, I'll ask the question and you pause it and talk and then hit play again for the next one so on and so forth so anyway let's discuss so do you remember a time someone owed you something or maybe when you owed someone else something how did that feel for you what did that feel like Next question, well, how do you think a relationship, so like a friendship or, or any relationship, how do you think relationships can be broken or damaged? Next question, what did you like about Jesus' parable about that father and his two sons. 
that story I told about the father and the two sons. What would you like about that? What surprised you about that story, about that parable of the father and the two sons? I wonder, what do you think it feels like, or what's it like to be brought into a good relationship, or to be brought back into a good relationship? The last question, have you ever needed to be brought or welcomed back? Have you ever needed to be forgiven and did somebody forgive you? Or have you ever welcomed somebody back into a good relationship with you? Did somebody hurt you that you had to forgive them? All right, that's our discussion for today. I hope you guys had a good conversation with each other. to share a song with you this week um, it's a classic hymn of the church called amazing grace and it was written by a man who felt very guilty for some of the things that he'd done in his life he was somebody that worked in the slave trade um, you know that that system where African Americans were brought to the United States and and sold as slaves. It's kind of an important thing for us to think about always, but especially now during Black History Month. But eventually this man um, figured out that what he was doing was wrong. And he turned to God for forgiveness and for grace, and he felt he received it. And so this song um, comes out of that ex experience of his, this experience of God's amazing grace that again embraces us with forgiveness and mercy uh, and love no matter what we may have done or left undone so this is amazing grace <laughs> Been there ten thousand years. 
shining as the sun with no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. That's what we have for you this week. We hope to see you uh, again next week for our final session on the Lord's Prayer. And then after that, we will begin a series on the season of Lent, which we've actually already begun. Um, but we'll talk about that in a couple weeks. So now, let's close with a prayer. And then I'll share another version of the Lord's Prayer with you. This one from a man named Mark Berry. So let us pray. God of restoration, we are reminded that you are a God who forgives and calls us to be a people of forgiveness. You are a God who restores and calls us to be a people seeking reconnection with each other. You are a God who holds no debts. Help us to follow in your way of care, wholeness, and love. We continue praying. O oh, breathing life, your name shines everywhere. Release a space to plant your presence here. Imagine your possibilities now. Embody your desire in every light and form. Grow through us this moment's bread and wisdom. Untie the knots of failure binding us as we release the strands we hold of others' faults. Help us not forget our source, yet free us from not being in the present. From you arises every vision, power, and song from gathering to gathering. Amen. May our future actions grow from here. Be at peace, my friends. And we'll see you soon.